that he has said. And God follows up. Yahweh follows up. The Lord follows up. Elohim follows the word of his servant. Like Elijah meets up with Ahab and says, you will not reign for three years until I speak again. Not until God speaks. Until I speak. But in this hour, and I just wanted to know. And then, in this hour, I want to know this. And God does God, then, does God chose president in this current? The question is, has, has the political system ever been blessed by God? It is the it is the Israelites who said we also want the prof we also want the president, mm -hmm. we also want the king, mm -hmm. like the other nations have mm -hmm. kings, and the whole colonial system as we have it right now, which has grown itself into the political space into the governments that we have are we saying god is with us in these political systems or god is managing us in this public or he's tolerating us and so what is the difference between a government and the kingdom of god what, how, how can we be talking politics when the bible is talking kingdom kingdom so you, you may want for the younger viewers i don't want to go too much there i'll suffocate you Please go and look for the works of Miles Monroe mm -hmm. when he was dealing about the difference between a kingdom and the parliament and how do we build the kingdom and what is a kingdom, what are the fundamentals of a kingdom. So all political parties and all governments, all governments are crime sins where they're collecting taxes on land that doesn't belong to them and abusing people that don't belong to them. The land belongs to the kings and belongs to the people and indig indigenous governance systems have been undermined for colonial political systems. So I would want to submit that uh, the universe is tolerating the political system. But the political system is pushing us towards the matrix. That's when we will know the beast that we have been tolerating all along. That the universe has never been in this. COVID gave us a small little introduction. Just a small little pinch on the bum. Mm -hmm. Just a small one. Just to tell you that your governments are useless. Mm -hmm. Your churches are useless. Your money is useless. And there is a bigger hand in the wicked world controlling <laughs> that is running this. And our governments are actually in that pool. So are we as Africans, are we as spiritual people, are we as Christians going to be clapping our hands and putting fire on the pot that is cooking us. <laughs> At the end of the day, who will be cooked? Us. So maybe we need just maybe to step back a little bit. I think our obsession and excitement with these prophecies and governments and power and money and contracts and the benefits of having prophesied over someone to get into power, then you are known, you are the prophet of so and so, you are the spiritual father of uh, this political leader. And the benefits that come with that has overshadowed our our sense of kingdom building and it's it's unfortunate that we are promoting a, and feeding a tiger and a snake mm -hmm. that will only come back and have us for breakfast has religion help develop africa yes and no to an extent of opening schools and but i could say yes but when you look at the quality of knowledge that we have received is it the knowledge that has made us better people, respect God better? No. It has come in with a double-edged sword. Because at the end of our graduation, we have not become better spiritually. We have not become better materially. How many graduates are walking the streets unemployed? So we look at religion and say, has it done anything? Has it built a few hospitals? But again, they've been used as abortion centers. <laughs> then... The same hospitals again are vaccinating our children with colonial medications and etc. So it, 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 it's difficult for me to answer that question because it comes with sweet and, and bitter. It's, it's sweet and sour. It's a hot tea and you mm -hmm. put chilies in it. And when I put it on my lips, I don't know whether I'm burning from the heat or I'm burning from the chilies. So yes, yes and no. Yes, they've helped us to build. But what have they built? What have they preserved? What have they destroyed? What have they... It leaves a sweet and sour taste in my mouth. And and, and had, had they, and what have they done? They've brought us foreign holidays. They've brought us different names. They've made us into celibacy. They've uh, made, taken our women and made them nuns. No, and brought in new idols. <laughs> so have they done anything good? Maybe yes. 
But I think that uh, religion, particularly Christianity, has actually come in as a concubine of colonialists and they have been massaging us so not to right. cry too much when the political system was beating us this side. Then you go to church and be told, no, it'll be okay. God loves you and uh, he's coming very soon to take you home. And mm. the troubles and sorrows would linger for a while. Mm -hmm. The joy will come in the morning. And you know, so it has been a pacifier. Had there been no religion, the African would have killed the white man by now. And <laughs> the, the religion has managed our consciences not to revenge. No, revenge belongs to the Lord. And then members sit back in. Oh, it's, it's in the hands of the Lord. But if you remove the Lord from this, hence I always say in a sarcastic way that if there's any group of people that needed to be Christians, they're white people. Mm -hmm. Because it is because of this religion that actually <laughs> they have been alive, particularly on the African continent. Just imagine had there been no religion, particularly Christianity. <laughs> Would have been war. A man who rapes your mother, mm -hmm. your father, takes your land, kills it. And bends you in the same church worshiping together. Mm -hmm. And you remove that you remove that Jesus from the picture. And you see white men who are busy saying, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in, you better believe in you better believe in the Bible. Because it helps as a you. white man. It's helping you too much. It's actually even up to now. That's what's keeping you alive. If I should start a church right now and, and say there is no Bible, there is no Jesus, and there is no God, we must stand up and revenge. Africa will burn fire. The white men will jump back in the boats by sunset. <laughs> Blood will flow on the streets and you look for me. It's because of religion that the consciences of the Africans is being managed. And the pastors are the ones who are distributing the tablets <laughs> of managing the anger. You know, focus on, don't focus on physical things. Focus on the hell. Focus on the things of God. Oh God. <laughs> See what Maponga is saying? Mm -hmm. He's speaking in the flesh. Mm -hmm. We are speaking in the spirit. You won't understand what, like really? I, I know this trash from the physical to the spiritual. In one sentence, religion is managing the anger of the Africans. And without religion, we will be sitting in a genocide. Some pastors, some traditionalists, whoever is just saying, your mother is a witch. And because of that, their, their kids or children have neglected them. Mm. What do you have to say about neglecting your parents? Uh, I think it's an insult to the spiritual realm to curse the door through which you have been allowed to come into this existence. It cannot be right that hatred and anger, suspicion can be used to relegate people to those camps where then you excommunicate yourself from your parents. I would not find anything better to tell you except Matthew chapter 1, which says, oh, He is Yeshua, the son of Joseph, the son of Boaz, the son of Ruth, the son of David, the son of Rahab. The son. I mean, you look at that biography and look at prostitutes, <laughs> adulterers, thugs, criminals. <laughs> all being included on the genealogy of the Savior. If this is the genealogy of the Savior, what makes you think that your genealogy could be anything better than that? So whether a mother is a witch, is an adulterer, is a prostitute, is a thug, but no man for the love of God and for the peace of mankind. If you want to curse yourself, hmm. curse the door through which the universe has allowed you to come into existence. Respect those doors. It's beyond you. It's not for you to judge that you should lift up your hand and strike your mother because people say she's a witch. Love her. Look after her. Respect your doors. Honor. Honor your father and your mother and your days, Exodus 20. 
will be many that I will give you while you live on earth. The only commandment with an insurance policy. <laughs> and your days <laughs> will be many. So there are many people who have gone to the graveyard much earlier mm. because they did not respect honor. and honor. I can't say much about that. I hope the spirit of the universe will interpret this to the, to the hearts of those who think that it is their earthly duty to walk around looking for witches. <laughs> <laughs> and it will only feel bad when one day you are also accused of being a witch mm -hmm. then you will understand but man, let's not wish them bad but take this insurance policy in Exodus 20 and make it part of your template before you do anything stupid and silly the one who wrote this book if he is truthful his word cannot lie and to bridge what is on the text you will cut your life short